Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday because we're back at the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament, it's round 18 and uh, we have German Grandmaster Wolfgang Ullmann uh, facing uh, Bobby Fischer with the Black Faces. So uh, what to say uh, a bit about uh, this game uh, before we check it out uh, and uh, you know talk a little bit about the players, uh, we do have a nice photo challenge so you know in preparation uh, of, of this entire series and uh, the candidates matches that will follow. Uh, the Palma de Mallorca Interzonal, uh, uh, here you have it, the one and only, now you have to say who it is, that's how the photo challenge works. Uh, best of luck to everyone, now let's check it out. Uh, Wolfgang Ullmann, like we've already said, uh, German Grandmaster, but not only a German Grandmaster, he also had a professional career uh, as an accountant, so, I mean, what, what a party animal. And uh, he, he won a lot of first places. Uh, 1970 and the events leading up to 1970 were probably one of his best years. He won a lot of first places in, in international tournaments. Uh, here he qualified for the inter interzonal tournament, uh, as you'll see later. But you might already remember, as we did show the final standings in the first couple of videos, uh, he will uh, qualify for the candidates' matches uh, after the Palma de Mallorca interzonal. And this uh, will be one of his uh, best achievements ever. But one of his... Uh, uh, most interesting aspects is that he is uh, an acknowledged, uh, uh, how, how would I say it, uh, uh, he is considered to be one of the, uh, the greatest masters of the French defense in the world. And uh, he, he has written many, many books on it, uh, on, on, on the French defense, and uh, he defeated uh, many strong grandmasters. Uh, one of his uh, most notable games is his uh, victory over, over David Bronstein in 1977 in Tallinn uh, in the French defense. But also, uh, as he is now playing against Bobby Fischer, 10 years ago in 1960 in Buenos Aires, he defeated Bobby Fischer with none other than the French defense. And uh, exclusively, if someone played E4 against him, he will play the French defense. And uh, that's one of the games uh, I will probably cover after we finish the Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament, you know, just for fun. So, that being said, there is already a d4 on the board, but uh, it's quite alright, as d4 is the first move that was played in this game. So, uh, Woman goes for d4. Uh, you know, he does have the white pieces here, but as Fischer would most likely go for e4, perhaps he would uh, maybe enjoy the black pieces, so he could go for the French defense uh, against Fischer a bit more. But okay, knight to f6, c4, uh, we have c5, Fischer goes for the Benoni. D5, now we have E6, the modern variation, Knight C3, we have captures, captures, and D6. So, everything standard here. Uh, E4, G6 immediately, and now Bishop to F4. And here we have A6. Uh, always a useful move, not allowing any Knight B5 business, preparing B5. And uh, you, can, you can go Bishop to G7 immediately, there is no... Uh, no uh, problems here that this will be any sort of a threat because here not queen to a5 check but rather knight captures on e4 and this will be fine after you attack the defender of the d6 square d6 pawn you will simply attack the knight and black is uh, much better here uh, but okay a6 by fisher provoking a4 uh, as woman does want fisher to push b5 we have a4 bishop to g7 and the knight to f3 uh, castles uh, bishop to e2, now comes the bishop to g4, as the light square bishop is uh, probably the, the most useless piece when you're playing the Benoni. Uh, Fisher wouldn't mind exchanging it. Uh, we have castles, rook to e8, and now comes h3. Uh, a move that could, uh, well, it could be definitely classified as a mistake. So if you're black here, if you're playing uh, Fisher, uh, do you capture or do you move the bishop back? Uh, what do you do in this position? Uh, neither of those options, rather you play knight captures on e4. Uh, and the reason this is possible because uh, h3 with the idea of uh, this variation where the bishop is placed on f4, uh, notice that the bishop on f4 is undefended. So what's the idea here? If you capture the bishop, then you get uh, bishop captures on c3. Pawn captures and knight captures here, the bishop is attacked twice, the queen is under attack, uh, you have to move the queen, and now comes knight captures on e2 with check, the rook is guarding the knight. King moves, and now you can simply either capture here, and then continue developing, and black will have an excellent position here, uh, and will be up material. Uh, another thing, after knight captures on e4, uh, h captures on g4 was not played, as Ullman sees that this will not uh, simply not do. Uh, simply simply won't do so knight captures on e4 and here comes rook captures on e4 so yet again you can't capture the bishop because this bishop on f4 is now undefended bishop to g5 with an attack on the queen and now queen to e8 so you have to you you 
have to see all the way to here before we actually decide to capture that pawn on e4 with the knight because now there's a double attack on the e2 bishop and again uh, white shouldn't really capture here. So bishop to d3, attacking the rook, and now comes a bishop captures on f3. Again, uh, one of the moves you, you had to see if you ever decided to capture that there. Uh, we have queen captures on f3. You don't want to capture the rook and give up two bishops for a rook. So queen captures, and now comes rook to b4. So Fisher has a, an outstanding position. Uh, he is up a pawn and everything is well here. Uh, we have rook eight to e1, uh, bishop to e5, and now comes queen to d1, uh, preparing to push f4 as the bishop on e5 is pinned. Uh, but it's not really a problem. Even if you capture here uh, on b2 and allow this f4 move, you always have bishop to d4 check, and after king moves, uh, you can then move the queen, but uh, you would simply allow white too much activity, even though white would not uh, regain material balance. Uh, so after queen to d1, Fisher simply plays queen captures on a4, he offers a trade of queens, and he's satisfied with the, the way things are. Uh, queen captures, rook captures, and now comes f4. Bishop to d4 check, king moves, and now knight to d7, simply preparing uh, to develop pieces. Uh, rook to e7, and uh, now if you check out the position, uh, you can see that Fisher has 7 pawns, uh, Ullman has 5 pawns, so Fisher is up 2 pawns. Uh, but Ullman has a bishop pair and a very active rook on e7. So is this compensation enough? Uh, we'll just have to uh, check check it out. Uh, Fisher goes knight to f6. He offers the b7 pawn. And okay, rook captures on b7, uh, reducing the, the material uh, difference uh, to only one pawn. Uh, and now not going for knight captures on d5 to allow f5. And uh, if the f file opens, then white will have uh, sufficient compensation uh, you know, uh, for the material. Uh, but after rook, uh, rook to b7, knight to h5 by Fisher. He doesn't go uh, for uh, for this capture, and now he's threatening knight to g3 check uh, with the idea of capturing the exchange here. Uh, king to h2, and now comes bishop to e3, attacking the f4 pawn. And here, the, the f4 pawn is attacked three times, by the bishop, by the knight, and by the rook. Uh, so the most obvious idea, g3, uh, does not work here, because now you get rook d4. You attack the bishop here, and if the bishop moves, then rook to d2 will be uh, very unpleasant. So after rook to d1 defending it, now you get bishop to f2, attacking the g3 pawn that was so conveniently pushed to protect f4. g4, and now knight captures on f4. Again, black is doing excellent here. Uh, so after bishop to e3, we have bishop to e2, uh, attacking the h5 knight. Uh, bishop captures on f4, bishop captures on f4, and now rook captures on f4, again not allowing uh, bishop captures knight, because the rook on f1 would be undefended. So rook to b6, attacking the d6 pawn, we have rook captures, bishop captures, and now rook to d8. Fisher again offers uh, the a6 pawn, because he doesn't want to allow uh, Ullman to capture the d6 pawn and create uh, a very strong passer here. Uh, bishop captures on a6, and now comes king to g7. Bishop to b5, uh, Ullman wants to play bishop to c6 to protect the d5 pawn, so when Fisher attacks it with, via knight f4 or knight f6, uh, the pawn will be defended and then the rook can move. Uh, so king to f6, bishop to c6, king to e5, Fisher improves the position of his king. Uh, we have uh, rook to b7, now attacking the f7 pawn, and Fisher goes uh, rook to f8, defending it. Uh, we have rook to e7. Uh, uh, this comes with check, Fisher plays king to d4, uh, we have rook to d7, uh, attacking the d6 pawn, and here it seems like uh, Fisher doesn't really have a good move here, if he goes back to defend the pawn, then again king, uh, rook to e7, check, and Fisher would have to go back, uh, but after rook to d7 attacking the pawn, there is one move uh, Ullman missed, and Fisher played it, so feel free to pause the video here and find uh, the, the crushing move that instantly wins Fisher the game. So there you have it, um, I will give it a couple of seconds for if you want to decide whether to do it or not, as usual. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations, you have successfully continued uh, Fisher's uh, legendary winning streak. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, knight to f6 was the move played, and it was in this position that Wolfgang Ullmann, uh, German grandmaster and an accountant, resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious once you see it. If you don't see it, it's not very obvious, but once you see it, it's very obvious. Uh, after rook captures on d6, king to e5 traps the rook. Uh, knight is guarding d7, rook is guarding d8, the rook has nowhere to go, the bishop is blocking the rook. So here you would simply have to give up the exchange, and with four pawns each, uh, a rook will be better than a bishop here. And even if you don't capture after knight to f6, if you play something like, uh, well, rook to b7, maybe 
blocking rook b8, not so black can't attack the pawn. Uh, again, black can pretty much choose what to do here. Knight captures on d5, the most obvious idea. Uh, Fisher will now be up two pawns, and now you you uh, you can't play uh, an end game being down two pawns against Fisher. So yeah, uh, that's the game, uh, round number 18 of the Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament of 1970, uh, Wolfgang Ullmann versus uh, Bobby Fischer, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, that you're enjoying the coverage of the Bobby Fischer series so far. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Le Kui Nyan, uh, Robin Morit, and uh, Shah Huda for a contribution to my channel, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon uh, with round 19 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal. Thank you all and uh, I'll see you soon.